everyone. Welcome to week two of our fall knit along featuring what shawl we wear. We've got the two different shawls here on display. Um, this is called the Ziggy Shawl. Designer is Kofi Locatelli on Ravelry. I'll put the links below in the comments. And this one is called Art Deco Fan Shawl. And it, it really is a fan favorite from all our knit alongers. So this week we've had an extra hour of knitting time due to setting our clocks back. So I hope you've all enjoyed a little bit of extra knitting work on your projects. And also a uh, welcome to this week's new knit alongers who've joined us. Um, the knit along is open for the month of November, so feel free to join in at any time. All the details are posted in our event page, fall, K-A-L, knit along, and it's called What Shall We Wear? So our new knit alongers, we have Anna and Marnie, joining us from Port Elgin and London, Ontario. So hello to both of you. And this week I do have our grand prize on display being put together with um, a handmade knitting basket, some reading material for knitters, some beautiful yarn hand dyed by Richard Debris. He's our local dyer in Ontario. And a really cute little um, tool bag which has all sorts of knickknacks inside from stitch markers to uh, tape measure, snippers, and so on labels for all your knitworthy friends. So we'll be doing the live prize draw at the end of November, so the last Friday of the month. In the meantime, feel free to um, try and guess the incentive questions that are posted each week on the live video because that will give you an extra ballot inside the ballot box. So originally everyone who had signed up for the knit along by participating by buying the chosen yarn and the patterns for the project has um, had a ballot already put into the ballot box with their name on it. So each week till the end of the month, we will be doing a little bit of trivia and then one lucky trivia winner will get an extra ballot in the box. So that's what it's all about. Hi Karen, good afternoon to you. Hope it's sunny where you are. We've had sun and clouds today. Right now, I think the clouds are moving in. But the good news is, no snow. It's really been a great month in Ontario, weather-wise. I have um, two new, I think I have one, two, three knit alongs to show you in the different colors. So maybe what I should do is start with describing the shawls and then the yarns for those of you who have not joined us last week or the week before to find out what we are doing. So the first shawl, Ziggy shawl over on my left, is a top-down shawl and it's knit on a four millimeter with two skeins of wool local, which is all natural sheep wool milled and grown in Yorkshire, England. So there you can get an idea of the size of this gorgeous shawl. So for those of you who love lace work and the more mindless nature of garter stitch, you will love working on this one. It's really not a complicated pattern. It's repeated throughout. Hopi Locatelli is known for her um, patterns that are well written with um, charts and written directions so you can choose what works best for you and uh, we have three colors left in stock so this is the wool local fingering weight it just has that really nice granola feel to it by granola i just mean it feels natural it is natural and you know you're working with good quality wool right from the mill so the tips that I can give you for the Ziggy shawl this week, some of you have 
worked through the lace part, which it does start off right at the top. That can be a little bit annoying because you don't have enough stitches to really spread it out and see the lace work and the pretty little chevron effect that it's creating. But that's okay, it just gets you warmed up for the main event where you're going to have the full lace panels further on and also for the bottom border. Uh, so yes, the only tip I can give you this week is be persistent, don't give up. If you have a few errors in the lace work, um, try to put more markers on. So usually we just have stitch markers to designate the increased sections at the center spine and then also at the beginning of the row where we increase also. But why not put on more stitch markers so that you can mark every pattern stitch repeat in the lace work. It seems like it's a lot of extra work and do you really really need the markers there? Probably not, but it does give you extra insurance and if you do make a mistake at least you can pinpoint which section of the lace work it's happening in. And the good news is that every wrong side row of the shawl is a purl row. So if you're making a mistake and you're losing a stitch somewhere but you're not sure where, the first place to look is at the yarn overs on the previous row. So if one section of the lace repeat is missing a stitch, I always check right away for my yarn overs. And if I've missed a yarn over or it's fallen off the needle, like they sometimes do mysteriously, then it's easy to pick it up right above where it should be on your purl row because it's not a stitch yet until you purl across. So you can just lift the bar up on your needle and that will save you oh, 10 or 20 minutes of undoing a row and a half. So the Art Deco fan shawl is a design by Maria Lee. And I'll put the link down below in the comments. And it is um, consisting of modular knitting, which might be a little bit scary at first, but it's really as simple as doing the heel of a sock and picking up along the side of a heel. That's all you're doing. You're knitting one fan motif, casting off at the point, and then you're picking up stitches for the next and the next. So you're building up in layers. And this is a charted pattern. It has written um, directions for just casting on, but all the uh, stitch techniques are on a chart. So you have to be comfortable with that or brave enough to try it for the first time. So this week I will demonstrate how to pick up. Last week I demonstrated how to um, pick up along the side edge of the first fan. So today I've got a few more fans in place. I'm going to show you how to pick up that very important center stitch, which happens on line two. And also we'll talk about color placement, and then I'm going to show you how to sew in the ends as you go because for every fan motif, you know there's going to be at least two ends. So if you leave them to the very end of the shawl, you'll be overwhelmed when you look at the wrong side. Why not just sew them in as you go and then it's neat and tidy and at the very end you just block it and you're ready to wear. And then we'll have our trivia at the end. So the yarn um, that we've used for the Ziggy shawl, I have one of our middle owners has loaned me her her project and it's in a beautiful navy blue which has a black fleck going through it. So I'll bring that up to the camera and then you can see she's put on the extra markers to help her in the lace work. So it's a type of color you have to look at closely to see the black undertone. So she's also put on a progress marker remind her which is the right side of the work because when you look at this particular pattern you see so much garter stitch it really looks almost the same on the reverse side so she started at the top she did her neat little garter tab which fills in the gap and it makes a nice straight edge there and then she's worked through the first lace panel You'll see here the little curly fibers of the sheep are still in the yarn. So she's worked through the first 
lace panel repeat, and then the garter stitch repeat, and she's now into the second lace panel repeat. She has to go through another section of garter stitch, another lace panel, another garter stitch section, and then the final lace panel becomes the border and the pico bind off. And she has barely even used much of the first skein, the 100 gram skein. So she has put on the extra markers, not only to mark the increased section on the spine, but also to mark her pattern repeat. And then we also have a sample here of the Art Deco fan shawl in a very different colorway than what I used for the shop sample. And I think this is just gorgeous to me. It looks like the sunset and the sunrise. And I can't wait to see the next colors put into all these little modular sections. So the color used for this one is one of the newer colorways. So you can see there are shades of turquoise still to come, the green, the yellow, and we've seen a little bit of this so far, and the coral, and that pretty soft gray. So that's one of the colors. And then we also have a knit alonger who posted her colors. I think she's knit up about two lines of the Art Deco fan shawl in this beautiful bright rainbow colorway. And that is on the event stage. So she's gotten into the pink, a bit of the blue. I don't think she's into this peacock blue yet. But there's still a lot of fun colors that will come out of this ball. So one of these big balls is what makes the shawl on the left. And this is 200 grams or 766 yards. So it's plenty to make a shawl. And altogether, we have three colors in stock. We have the bright rainbow color, the soft sunset color, and then this pretty blue green which I haven't seen anybody uh, post a picture of yet. But if you keep checking our events page, I'm sure somebody will sooner or later. So I have my sample here, which I've been working on. It's the same color as our shop sample, which unfortunately has sold out. So there you can see I have my base fan, that's line number one. Line number two, I have the two fans on the right and on the left. So on the second line, to create this fan, I had to cast on half the number of stitches and then pick up the second half of the stitches along fan number one. And when I've completed this fan, I moved over to the second fan of line two, and I had to start picking up half the number of stitches along the edge of fan number one on line number one, and then I cast on the second half of the stitches. So it's the same fan pattern repeated from the chart over and over. The only thing that's different is how you cast on or how you pick up. So now where I am is on to line number three, and this will be the first fan that's actually all picked up. There's no casting on involved. So you can see here I've cast on half the number of stitches as required. No, I haven't cast on. I've picked them up. I've picked up half the number of stitches, and then the pattern will ask you to pick up one stitch right in the center, which I'm going to show you, and then I'll continue and pick up the other half of the stitches along this half. So that's how you fill in the gaps in modular knitting. So I am ready to pick up my center stitch and I just wanted to point it out to you so you know which one it is. 
It is the final stitch that you've cast off from your very first fan, and it tends to tilt to the right, so you want to make sure you get right through the middle of it. And it is important to pick up that center stitch, not beside it, not underneath it, not above it, because that's what holds the fans together. And then there will be no holes and no stretching. So after I've picked up the center stitch, I just go back along the edge of the next fan and pick up under every two bars a new stitch. So that is in between edge stitch and first knit stitch. Now I don't worry about counting how many I'm picking up. I just pick up one stitch in every single row or every single space. And then at the end, if I end up with an extra stitch picked up that's just filling in a hole, all I'm going to do is knit two together on the wrong side row. It doesn't show at all. It's better to have picked up an extra stitch than to have skipped a space and leave a hole. So I hope that helps you with the picking up of the sections. And then I'm going to get my darning needle and just show you how to weave in your ends. So I'm going to pull back what I've picked up and get rid of the needle. Okay, so this is the reverse side of the piece I'm working on. And we really want this shawl to be reversible. We don't want it to have a messy underside because if you're giving it as a gift to somebody, they really don't know unless you tell them that this is the right side of the shawl. And I think it is almost as pretty on the wrong side once it's blocked. So why not weave in the ends as neatly as possible and let them have the choice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this end here and thread it up and then I'll show you how I hide it as neatly as possible. Okay, so you can see you have a ridge where we've picked up the stitches on the right side of the work. So that is the ridge where I'm going to hide my ends. I don't sew my ends into the actual knitting. First of all, they tend to pop out. They make that section look a bit too bulky and they can also make it look messy. So the best place to hide your end is just to pinch the layers together so that you can see that ridge is pronounced and then stay on one side of the ridge. Don't uh, jog back and forth. And I'm putting my needle in from the inside of the ridge to the outside. And I'm going under every bar at the edge, staying on the upper level of that ridge. And when I've sewn down about two inches, one and a half to two inches, that's plenty. Because remember, this yarn has a good grip. It, it has a slight fuzzy halo, and it will map together after blocking. So there you can see it's totally not noticeable. I'm going to snip the end and it will just blend right into the ridge. So that's a good tip for sewing in your ends as you go instead of waiting till the final cast off and then being overwhelmed and spending two or three hours a night sitting there like a robot just sewing in end after end. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about their shawl project? We've had more questions about this one over the last week than about the Ziggy shawl. I think a lot of you have knit shawls similar to Ziggy, you know, triangular shape, top down with the center spine. So that seems to be more straightforward. This is really kind of artful, free form. Oh, I was going to mention the, the color placement too. So you'll notice that with your big ball, 200 gram ball of yarn. Um, the colors change pretty much within every fan motif. I think you might only get one or two fan motifs that just happen accidentally to be 
all one color, which is totally fine. It's up to you how you place the color. This one has one fan motif that's all in the coral orange and the others change color throughout. So if you want to play with the colors, I suggest doing it after maybe line two is complete because then you get a sense of how the colors are coming out. So what you can do is just jog around. You don't have to do this shawl line by line. You could easily add a motif over on the right side and then jump over and do your next motif on the left side. As long as you're connecting to one of the fans, then you can get away with that. So if you feel that suddenly the ball of yarn is producing too much of the gray color and you're a bit tired of that, then instead of having one gray fan on top of another gray fan or beside a gray fan, spread it out a bit and maybe move some of the gray over to this side and then when the color changes to that pretty flamingo pink, then you can start to spread that one out and put some of it over on the right side and some on the left and maybe some in the middle. So that's what I mean by color placement. It's a free form shawl, whereas a lot of shawls you just have to take the color the way it comes from the ball because you're going row after row. This one can be built up in any direction that you like as long as two of them are connecting. So I think you'll have fun with that once you get um, used to the pattern and uh, are not so focused on reading line by line in the chart. Then you can start to move around and also a good idea that one of our knit alongers mentioned is to check off the fans as you do them just so you have an idea. So you're going to have a schematic that looks like this. Each little fan is represented. Remember we add an extra line of fans because you have plenty of yarn to do that and you want to increase the width and the length of your shawl. So she was just recommending that we check mark each fan as we do them and then we have an idea looking here how far we've come. So I think most of you are already onto line two or line three which is a great progress that extra hour of clock time has helped us. Hi Catherine, hi Tammy, happy Friday to all of you. So now for our trivia. We're going to talk about um, the wool local, which is our, our pure wool that comes from um, Britain. And I think you'll be interested to know a little bit more about the two sheep and how they combine together and the characteristics of each. So both of them are produced from sheep fleece known as long wool sheep fleece. So long wool sheep are just uh, primarily British sheep that have been um, producing the longest wool fiber. That means one fiber of the fleece is long. And when you spin that together, you get a better quality wool. So long wool sheep are common in Britain. They produce the longest wool fiber with a large diameter. The large diameter is just one piece of the fiber. It's known as a micron. So it's the measurement used to determine the diameter of a wool fiber. The lower the micron number, the finer the fleece. For example, a human hair, if you pull a hair out of your mouth or out of your head, is approximately 70 microns. So one hair is 70 microns. You'll be surprised to know how much a sheep hair is. Um, so Wool Local is a blend of the two long wool fleeces, Masham Sheep with Blue Face Lester Sheep. We call it BFL, Blue Face Lester. Masham Sheep are a specifically developed breed, hardy enough to withstand British winters and their annual rainfall of 70 inches. 
They have a black and white spotted face and matching legs and a very precious looking little tuft of curly wool that comes out of the top. Their fleece grows six to 10 inches long and the micron count is 29 to 34. So you have to compare that to a human hair at 70 micron. CFL or Blue Face Lester is one of the more popular sheep breeds in Britain. They have evolved from ancient crossbreeding of long wool sheep varieties. So there are other types of long wool sheep. It's a very small framed sheep with a high Roman nose and a velvety soft face in a pale blue gray tint. The fleece is very fine and curly with a luster and a fiber diameter of 24 to 28 micron, which makes it thinner and bouncier than most long wools. It's one of the softest of the British fleeces. You'll notice the unmistakable drape and softness right away when knitting with BFL. And you'll find if you're knitting this shawl, it is super bouncy. You can pull on it in multiple directions and it bounces right back. It also has lovely drape after blocking. This one, because it's still in the knitting stage, looks a little bit crimped, which is the natural um, look of the sheep fleece. But once it's blocked, all the fibers will straighten themselves out and uh, fall neatly into place and the stitches bloom and sort of fill in the gap. So we'll talk about blocking next week, I guess, when we get closer to that. Okay, so we do have a trivia question. And again, we're not going with the fastest uh, comments. We're just going with somebody who comes up with the right answer. And that person will get um, one extra ballot in our draw bucket towards the grand prize, which will be a live draw right here, the last Friday of the month. I think it's November 26th. I could be wrong. So name one other British long wool sheep. That's pretty easy. There's no standard answer because it can be one of many answers. So I'll let you work on an answer there. And um, I hope everyone has a great weekend full of knitting plans and other plans with family or friends. And I will be back next Friday and we'll talk about, um, well, for this one, we're going to talk about the uh, half fan row, which is your top row before you do the cast off. There are some German short rows involved, so there's going to be a little bit more demos there. In the meantime, you can check our event page and you'll see if anyone has posted their works in progress. And also that's where we put all the tips and techniques if you're trying to catch up and maybe have missed last week's video. So happy knitting everyone. We'll see you next Friday at four.